You're listening to Praying with Power and Purpose. All right, good and blessed morning, loved ones. It is Monday, June 8th, 2020. This is week 33 of prayer for 5780. Thank you so much for being here. Today, I'm going to cover cover a couple of different things that I've been working on, but I want to um, share with you, I have been having the most amazing season of dreams, um, a very busy season of dreams. I'm talking about not even really peaceful sleep because as soon as I close my eyes, I'm like dreaming, dreaming, dreaming about stuff and all things that are going on in the world and stuff. And so I just want to admonish all of us that we want to be praying um, constantly every day for our church and for our nation. As you can see, the enemy has advanced their in time plan big time, and um, it's not supposed to be happening. So the body of Christ, if we want to stave off, um, you know, the full onset of the end times, then we need to continue to just pray and push back the plans of the enemy. The Lord has released prophetic words all over the place saying that if the body of Christ will, then, you know, things would come back into complete alignment by the end of summer and then come into um, a season of peace toward the beginning of 2020. But the body of believers has to pray. And um, as I was watching the news and all this stuff over the weekend, I was looking at how many um, believers were praying, and there are not that many. Like the number of churches out there that are holding prayer sessions for the world and stuff like that, there are not very many. And I was watching some of the, you know, the the citizen um, social media clips of the quote-unquote prayer seasons on the Capitol, like Philadelphia had one over the weekend and stuff like that. And they're not even praying according to biblical protocol. They're messing around. And that's not what the body of Christ needs in this season. So I, if you've been on these calls, pray with me for your time. You know I pray the word and I pray um, prophetically, make prophetic decrees according to what the Lord is saying. That's the most effective way for you to pray. You pray the word and then let him give you those specific things for the season that you're in so that you have a guaranteed victory. Um, the most recent dream that I had with the Lord, I was asleep and he just came to me and just started talking to me about how to get into that uh, Holy Spirit bubble. And it's something that I have asked about periodically. It's something that he's told me before. I have a couple of videos where I discuss it. And it's about that, um, that, that place of communion with the Godhead where you, you exist like you were, like it was in the Garden of Eden, where you're so protected, like the enemy can come up to you, but they have to actually negotiate with you to cause you any harm, and then you have to actually allow it, because you're so protected by the Lord that any type of unforeseen attack would not be able to come to you. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the things that the Lord was telling me in my dream, he just walked up and started talking. And it was like one of those atmospheres that, you know, if you look at my stuff, I always have a, like a lot of blue nighttime and stars type of stuff. And that's a lot of what, what I see in my dreams a lot of times. So that image um, resonates with my spirit very much. So um, it's just like an atmosphere like that. It's pretty much dark. But then you have that blue light, that blue light, which is uh, representative of divine revelation. So when that light is coming toward me, I know the Lord's going to be saying something to me. But in this dream, I'm asleep, and it's like I'm laying on nothing, just air laying down. And then he comes up, the Spirit of God just walks up and starts speaking, and he talks about, he asked me, he was like, do you know how to um, get into that place of communion where you can get out of anything the enemy might want to bring to you? And he said, um, you in this season, you need to be making sure that your soul is clean. And this is stuff that we know because the Lord, you know, everybody talks about soul ties and stuff like that. But the cleansing of the soul sometimes needs to be done on a daily basis. And I think that's what he was reminding me of. And that's something that I don't remember to do. I try to do it because I watch so much news and get so many prayer assignments from, like, being on social media and stuff like that. And... um so before I go to bed, I try to remember each night to clean out my soul, but I don't always. So that's something that you want to be sure that you're doing in this season. It's going to help you hear from the Lord better, and it's also going to keep you protected from a lot of the chaos that the enemy is trying to bring to anybody who's willing. And as you can see, there are a lot of people who are willing. But even on top of that, his main goal was um, reinforcing that the body of believers has the authority on this earth to put a stop to anything. Like um, my prayer group prayed 
to end the riot last, what day was it, Friday, and all of the, everybody was projecting, you know, 10 times more people at riots than they actually had show up this weekend. So that was an awesome thing, and that's how powerful the prayer of believers who are praying in faith and praying according to the word is. So just be keeping those things in mind for this season. The body of believers has to pray. If you don't already have a prayer group that's praying um, prophetically each week or you're not listening to the prophetic voices, the accurate prophetic voices of the nations um, who are giving you information on how to pray each week, you can always pray with my group. I don't have a set day that we pray because I wait until the Lord says go. And then I um, write up a prayer starter and then we pray like within the, in the, within the next day or two. So like on... Um, Thursday of last week, the Lord's like, um, go ahead and stop these riots. And so I wrote up the prayer starter, and then we prayed around the clock um, Friday. So things like that. We've also prayed over um, the hydroxychloroquine drugs, and now, um, I don't know if you heard, but over the last week, they, um, the people who put out the study challenging President Trump's recommendation of that drug have now recanted and said that the drug is not harmful, and they actually apologized to the president. The media, of course, has not apologized to him, but the people who put out the study, you know, saying that um, he shouldn't have recommended it because it, it could be life-threatening, they have since apologized. They have apologized. Some scientists have apologized to the president of the United States that most people hate. Now, that is nothing but the Lord. And um, our prayer group helped usher that in. Um, another thing we prayed for was exposure. The Lord said exposure, so we've been praying for exposure. And a lot of things have been coming out. Lots and lots of things have been coming out. So, for example, Hillary Clinton had to go to court on Tuesday, and she filed an appeal to say that she didn't need to testify anymore about all the things that she'd done wrong. And there was new information that came out in her in her appeal um, hearing that said, no, we found... Um, some more illegal activity related to Benghazi, her emails, and some other things as recently as November 2019. So, yes, she does need to testify and give a full explanation of this. And the judge actually said, your appeal is denied, and she has to testify on September 9th. So, yes, the, the people who she could implicate, are going to be upset, and they're all politicians and, you know, big business owners and stuff like that around the world and around the nation, so they, that's why they're all funding this chaos and stuff. They want to keep everybody so distracted that we don't uh, pay attention to those big things that are going on, and I was talking to my son the other day, and he was like, Mom, someone's going to say you're a conspiracy theorist, and I was like, you know what, they usually just say I'm crazy, but it's because I can see things that are happening behind what people are saying, and so I... Um, have a little bit of understanding of things that are going on. In addition to all the reading and research that I do, gives you additional Im- information. But usually I like I have a dream about something, like those kids that were rescued, you know, secretly back a couple months ago. That um, the only reason I went and looked up that those operations that were taking place by the military was because I had a dream about President Trump with a child in a park, and then come to find out there's rescues taking place you know, in underground tunnels under under Central Park. So things like that, you know, you, you, you see in the spirit, you can see a little bit more than what most people are saying and what most people are doing, and then you um, act according to what the Lord says based on that. So you can call me a conspiracy theorist, but I got a mind. I don't mind. I know what I can see, and it has served me well over the years. Um, last thing I want to tell you before we start praying is that um, I'm teaching a course on portals on Thursday, and it's really, really good one. And it, it goes in alignment with the Lord talking about how we can stay supernaturally protected through all of this stuff. And even though um, we are kind of being pushed toward the end times outside of God's original timeline, that is a component of what the Bible says will happen to believers um, during that, um, if they were actually on the earth, anybody's actually here during the rapture or after the rapture portion or during, you know, depending on where you believe, there's three different time periods that people say the believers will be taken away. Um, either way, there, if you're here during all the chaos, there is a portion of the of scripture that says that you will have authority over the weather to call down fire and all of that stuff, and you would be supernaturally protected for a season during all that chaos. And the Lord is kind of showing me 
um, through these dreams that I've been having that that can happen to us in this season. We can be supernaturally protected. I still know, and most most um, believers who are prophetic know that we are being pushed toward the end time outside of God's timeline. But even if we do get pushed there, like if the body of Christ doesn't stand up and we do get pushed there, um, you, you still can be protected. And you just need to know the word, believe the word, and move according to what the word tells you. All right? So if you would be interested in taking that course, it would be a blessing. You're going to learn about um, being seated in heavenly places because the Bible says that you're seated and hidden in Christ in the spirit while your body is taking um, physical space here. And the level of authority and dominion that that gives you, most believers aren't walking in that. And that's one of those things that the Lord has been speaking to me about in dreams over this season, about how to put that authority, at that authority into activation. And it all has to do with you opening up a portal and being to um, maneuver in the spiritual realm. So there's that. And then today, what I want to focus on is Isaiah 45, 3. Let me see if I can grab a Bible for us real fast. Um, so I've been praying for um, a big chunk of cash for about $10,000. And I explained, I wrote a, a post on my vm7academy.us website. So if you go there today and you click on prophecy, the very first post there is called 10,000. And you can read that about how you um, stay in your faith until you manifest something that the Lord says that you can have and receiving the vision and everything. So I've been declaring that, praying over Isaiah 45.3. And um, after you um, pray over something, meditate on it for a while, but you'll start building a picture of it in your spirit. And that's when you know that your faith is coming up so that um, you will have a manifestation. And so I talk about that in that post. And then I printed out a check there, a blank check for ten thousand dollars. So if you go over there and you print out that check, write your name in it, and you, if you, if you, know, if you desire, if you are bold enough to ask the Lord for ten thousand dollars, He will give it to you. And Isaiah forty-five three says, "I will give you hidden treasures, riches stashed away in secret places, so you may recognize that I am the Lord, the one who calls you by name, the God of Israel." And the reason I um, am meditating on that scripture is because of all of the demonic money that's being shifted right now. And demonic money, I mean, sometimes it's blatantly out there in the open moving around, but a lot of it is being moved around secretly right now. Like um, uh, there have been a few people who have been caught on video receiving money while they're out rioting and stuff like that. But there's also money that the people who are organizing these things from behind are giving those organizers to distribute to ignorant people. So I want the big money. I don't want the little $200 or $2,000 that you get a day to riot. I want the big money to come into the body of Christ. And so that's why I'm praying for $10,000. My son's praying for $10,000 for himself as well. And there's a scripture, more than one, but the one I'm focusing on for this season is Isaiah 45.3. And of course, the reason I'm focusing on that one is because when you're praying and asking the Lord for something, he's going to give you the vision. He might give you a picture. He might give you a scripture. Whatever it is that involves his yes, that's what you meditate on. And so when I'm That's the scripture that I'm meditating on to receive um, this secret money that's stashed away. And um, you are allowed as a believer to take money that everybody in the world, well, everybody in the world may not know, may not realize, or may not admit, um, that the enemy is using to do bad things with. That's not God's intention ever. And if you are somebody who's bold enough to ask for that income, the Lord will give it to you. I'm telling you, I promise you. He will give it to you, but you just have to be bold enough to step up and ask for it, and then you have to move forward in faith and do whatever it is that he tells you to do. And then you have to stay on the faith until manifestation. I talk about that in the post. Do you know how long is it going to take to manifest? So you can read through that and get the information for you. So let's go ahead and give thanks to the Lord and just meditate on Isaiah 45.3. Heavenly Father, I come before you. I proclaim the blood of Jesus over myself and all of us listening and in agreement spirit, soul, and body, I declare a bloodline around us that cannot be crossed for the upon pain of death. Heavenly Father, we come to you and we confess any sins we've committed in word, thought, or deeds since the last time we came before you in confession. 
please bring any specific things to us, Holy Spirit, so that we can confess them. We praise you because your word says that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So I just declare we are cleansed of unrighteousness and we are the righteousness of God in Christ. Those sins are nailed to the cross of Christ under the blood and the enemy can no longer use them to accuse us. Holy Spirit, we just invite you to shine your light in our souls to bring cleansing and healing. Remove any shards of darkness that have been left there from anything that we've experienced, heard, thought, or seen. Um, in recent times, and we just give you permission to do whatever work needs to be done to seal our souls for the work of Christ, for the the Father, and for Jesus' inheritance. We thank you for the work that you do in us. We thank you that you have given us everything we need for life and godliness. We praise you because you are the God of victory. We praise you that you are the God of provision. We praise you because you are the God of divine and supernatural protection. We thank you that you are the God of divine wisdom, revelation, knowledge, and understanding. We praise you, Heavenly Father, that you are willing to open up the eyes of our spirit so that we can maneuver successfully between these two realms. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your angelic host, that we are able to open portals to usher them into our atmospheres, to partner with us, to advance your kingdom in the earth, but also to take the word of God that we speak and to bring manifestations to us. Lord, we give you praise, honor, and glory for who you are. We give you praise, honor, and glory that you have not left us without anything. Your word says that you are our shepherd. We have everything that we need. We have everything that we want. We have everything that we desire. We thank you and we praise you for that. We honor you, Lord God. Father, as a body of believers who are willing to pray, pray in faith, pray in agreement, and pray diligently, we just say right now that we come into agreement with your timeline that this is not the time for the enemy to be raging the way it is. And we say right now, you cease and desist in Jesus' name. We say right now, you cease and desist. Everyone with a, an assignment that's trying to advance the end time clock, we arrest you right now in Jesus' name. We bind you in fetters of iron and we cast you out and away from this earth realm. We say right now that Jesus Christ is Lord. We declare his kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God, that you have made us the Ecclesia, your governing body on this earth. And I say right now, I repent on behalf of the body of Christ that has not risen up to take authority over these things that we need to take authority of. I repent on behalf of the body of believers that doesn't understand and doesn't believe and doesn't know the full word of God. Lord God, I just confess and repent on behalf of those believers who are getting caught up in the demonic chaos instead of declaring the word of God over every situation and seeking the word of God over every situation. I thank you for supernatural and divine exposure. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that it only takes two people in agreement to change the flow of this nation. And I praise you that there are more than two. Heavenly Father, I ask that you please locate supernaturally every believer who's playing, praying in agreement with your will, whether they're decreeing it by word or they're praying in the Spirit, Heavenly Father, and I ask that they be marked and sealed in Jesus' name. I ask that additional angels be stationed around them, be loosed to them so that they have all the protection that they need, every resource that they need, every bit of understanding and knowledge and revelation that they need. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for the changes that are taking place in this nation. I thank you for increased exposure. I thank you for in exposure all the way from the government down to the school systems, down to individual households, if they are not serving the Lord properly but declaring your name or declaring to walk out your word, Heavenly Father. I thank you for your faithfulness in all things. I thank you for authority and dominion. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that we can speak to the enemy in Jesus' name and authority while we're submitted to you, and they must flee in terror. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for who you are. I thank you for who you have made us. I thank you that you have allowed us to be ambassadors of Christ on this earth. I thank you and I praise you that Jesus' name has all power, all authority. And at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee must bow of all things in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. I thank you, Lord God. I praise you, Lord God. I magnify you, Lord God, and I exalt you. You are great and greatly to be praised. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that the body of Christ is awakening. I just 
declare the blood of Jesus over the body of Christ, and I just declare that they are waking up. They are waking up. And Heavenly Father, I set myself in complete agreement with those giant bulls of Holy Spirit anointing that you have waiting for the body of Christ to call them to the earth, and I'm standing in the gap for the body of believers of around the world, and I'm asking that you please pour out those bulls of your spirit. Pour out those bulls of your spirit now. If there are those who have been called to fast, to usher in your presence, but they have refused to do it, Lord, I ask that you please bend their knees right now to get down and pray, to bring in that spirit of God. I thank you and I praise you, Heavenly Father, that you are waiting for us. You already have a great victory planned, and all we have to do is pray it in. All we have to do is pray it in, Lord God. I say right now my mouth is open wide for you to fill it according to your perfect will and according to your purpose. I thank you, Lord God, for every bit of divine provision and protection in this season. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have not been slack by providing everything that we need it moment by moment. And I thank you that you have not withheld any amount of revelation. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I give you praise, I give you honor, I give you glory. I bless you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Father, I just lift up Isaiah 45, 3 to you, and I praise you for those riches and those treasures that are hidden in secret and dark places. Lord, one version of that scripture says, in dark places, I just loose the Holy Spirit light to go into dark places right now and to supernaturally ID wealth that can come into the kingdom of God to serve the body of believers, to usher in the spirit of God, and to bring in the billion-fold harvest. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you know where everything is. There is nothing hidden or secret before you. And I say right now that we have increasing understanding, revelation, and wisdom and knowledge of where those things are. I say that if there are instances where there is drug money or anything other type of it, illegally obtained money being stored in our nation and around the world, that those things be re- revealed right now. I just decree um, supernatural exposure on those things in Jesus' name. Any money that's supposed to be in the hands of the body of Christ, Lord, I just decree supernatural exposure, supernatural revelation of those dark and secret places. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are a God who is willing to allow the body of believers to receive the wealth of the wicked. And on behalf of those who are willing to agree, Heavenly Father, I declare that in this season, in this summer of Pentecost, in this season of harvest, that we receive the wealth of the wicked, we receive the treasures hidden in dark and secret places right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Heavenly Father. I glorify you. I praise you. I magnify you. I bless you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. I bless you, Lord, and I praise you. I bless you, Lord, and I praise you. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you for all that you're doing in this season. Thank you for your voice. Thank you for your willingness to remain on this earth so that we can have power. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Just meditate on that, the wealth of the wicked coming into your hands, especially if you're a tither and a giver. If you don't have any problem giving off of what the Lord gives you, ask for those things. Ask for those things. There is so much wrong money being moved around right now, and it doesn't have to happen if the body of Christ would rise up and speak. You know, sometimes I've heard um, the body of believers, like, try to stop money that comes in through drugs and stuff like that before, but instead of also adding that it come into the church, they just say that it doesn't, you know, it's not able to be trafficked in my neighborhood or in our city or whatever. No, we, we want that money to come into the body of believers. You know, it doesn't need to go sit in a, you know, in the, in the treasury somewhere just collecting dust for years until it goes into, you know, a trial 15 years later, and you never know what's going to happen to it, that stuff can come into the body supernaturally right now. And that's what the Lord intends. He's never intending for money to be running on demonic supply lines. He's never expecting that. And that's something that the body of Christ has not attacked 
you know, very openly in the past. And yet when you watch anything um, about, you know, those end times movies and stuff like that, you see them having to, quote unquote, steal things because, you know, you can't buy or anything without the mark of the beast. Well, you don't have to worry about stealing things. You have supernatural power to redirect and call things to you. That's another thing the Lord has been showing me in dreams. You know, we need to get in the habit of commanding food to multiply and all of that stuff. That's one of the reasons we're not ready for the end times yet, because the body of believers doesn't know how to work all of the supernatural, you know, just the basic stuff. We're supposed to be doing the basic stuff that Jesus did in the Word, you know, while he was on earth, and he said we're going to do greater. We, we have done some stuff greater, like airplanes and all that stuff is greater. But we need to be able to multiply bread and, and fish, you know, before the end times come. And we don't really know how to do that. Like there are a few of us who know how to do that, and I don't even know how to do it great. I know how to, you know, speak to things to multiply and have them last. But I, I have never, like, multiplied, you know, fish and loaves and we that's something that the body of believers needs to do before we get hit with the end times. So we gotta step it up, church, and get where the Lord wants us to be. I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted. I'm gonna close this out. Heavenly Father, I give you praise, I give you honor, I give you glory. I thank you for your voice that is um so near, so available in this season. I welcome it, I honor it, Heavenly Father, and I just decree that I will never shut off your voice. I always want to receive it so that I can continue to move forward according to your perfect will and purpose. I bless us in Jesus' name. I just decree that our ears, eyes, um, noses, all of our senses are open to what's going on in the spiritual realm and that we are living victoriously in the name of Jesus. That is our inheritance and we possess it in full in Jesus' name. If anybody has anything that they would like to add or that they heard or saw, you're welcome. All right, I just decree that you are going to um, come into exploits in this season. Begin to do the basic works of Jesus Christ, and the greater works will come. And I just decree that for myself also. God bless you.